I hope this was an informative video. As always, I hope you were entertained. Are you not entertained? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, if all goes well, and it always does, there's never any problems. Everything's always perfect. Uh, we're gonna get the final coat of primer on the Blasphemy build. Cause it's the final countdown. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael, your host. Behind me is a 1969 Porsche 911 S that was a race car that I've converted back into a street car. We are on the very final stages of prep before it goes to Costa Mesa collision to get painted. On the last episode, Henry Romero, who's the proprietor of said Costa Mesa collision, was here giving me some final tips because I'm a hack and it's the first time I've ever done it. So what he suggested was, I had a few high spots, so I whacked them with my body hammer uh, and a dolly. I've gone through the entire car a bunch with the lovely icing glaze, which is like one of my favorite products I've ever used. It is like this final super smooth glazing putty. Imagine it like the SEAL Team 6 of Bondo. So I've sanded all that stuff back and what he has suggested is I spot prime the areas that I've been working on. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the car and I think we're just gonna shoot this thing and call it a career. What do you say? What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit the primer on any spots that are sort of exposed like this and uh, especially some of the areas that I've worked on. Oh, I feel a little baby high spot right there. How's your mother? Oh, oh now I, oh, yeah, 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 all right, hold on, hold on. No, it's pretty good. Um, anyway, so I did that. This one, of course, I had all the trouble with in the last episode, but this is feeling really smooth. So I just did that entire thing without looking at it. I'm just feeling the panel just to try to feel if there's any little nubs anywhere. But we're getting to this area of like super nerdy, like quarter millimeter kind of stuff. Car's been wiped down. It is, uh, it's pretty good, guys. I'm feeling pretty good about it. So give me a chance to use my new 3M mask that I got for my blasting business. All this nice filtration. Let's paint some stuff. I am your father. Okay, we've been here before, guys. This is uh, not the First time we've done this primer. I've got my gun very clean uh, from the last time. And if you remember last time, I, I really made a mistake by putting a little inline filter in my gun and totally blew it. I've done all of this stuff multiple times now, so I'm definitely a lot more comfortable with the process. Now, if you would like to learn how to apply primer, uh, go back and watch one of my older episodes. And I take you through the whole process. I'm not going to do that this time because we've done it at least three times now. Got a little leak in my gun, which is not great. I don't know why. Got a leak happening here. I don't know where. Damn it. Why can't it be easy ever? All right, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this. You see this? I can't get a break. All right, that's the first explicit tag. Maybe it'll demonetize me for this, but. Um, my gun, for inexplicably, just started leaking, like massively leaking paint. I have no idea why. Uh, I mean, obviously, I rebuilt it, so it was my fault. I don't know what I did paint primer all over the floor. 
runs all over the car. Uh, the, it was so good when it was working, which it worked fine. It was functioning fine. But as I would tilt it down, it would just splatter paint all over the car. I don't know what I did. I'm so bummed. Um, I have to leave it. I'm going to show you the close up of it while I try to figure out why this thing. Can you see this? It's just leaking. Right now I have uh, paint uh, lacquer thinner in here. And I don't know what I don't know what it's doing. I don't know where it came from. As they say, it is quite frustrating. I mean, I'm dripping all over. Good Lord. What? I gotta just, I'm ruining everything here. All right, to be continued. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. So literally every single time I've done this, every time I've used my uh, air compressor and a, and a gun, a paint gun, I have either put some water through it or lacquer thinner through it. And um, I've made sure it was functioning. Okay, I dial it in. For whatever reason, maybe because I just rebuilt the gun, I didn't do that this time. And it just peed all over the car. I'll show you. The whole thing is full of runs, the whole car. Like everywhere I just painted is just full of runs. But I couldn't stop because it's the paint, the primer is so expensive. Anyway, so looks like the body work is pretty good though. It looks pretty good. I haven't looked everywhere. I've got paint all over the floor, of course. But the body work is looking pretty fly for a white guy. Maybe just a teeny little guy right there is the only thing I can see. Anywhere I try to paint, it's all over the floor. Good thing I painted my floor gray. Um, this is all crappy. It's all crappy. Actually, this is pretty smooth right here. Nevertheless, I did get on what I wanted to get on. Um, all this stuff is going to get sanded anyway. I've got to block all this stuff out before I actually prime the entire car. Uh, and then I'll bring the primed car down to uh, Henry's. All right, so I'm going to take the L for the day. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, I'm pretty encouraged by the body work. I will leave this until tomorrow. Go play some pickleball as usual. Once I can flatten this thing out and block it back, uh, it should be good. Okay, it's the next day. I've just opened the door and evaluated what I'm looking at here. Um, car looks like a Jackson Pollock, basically. Uh, there's paint splatters all over it. The good news is, and there is good news, other than the you know primer being all over the floor and my gun being completely messed up and, and the primer not turning out like I'd hoped. The bodywork looks friggin' killer. Uh, it did reveal a couple of trouble spots that I'm gonna have to deal with. So the plan for the day is I'm gonna use my guide coat. I'm going to block down everything that I just sprayed yesterday and it should look pretty good by the end of it. So first and foremost, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Let's see if you can see, you see all of these runs? They're everywhere. We had a few trouble areas of the car. We had the top of this fender. We had the top of this one where the gas door was eliminated. I had that big hole that was down here and you know, a couple other odds and ends, but try to see through the bad, um, you know, drippiness into this lovely smooth bodywork. I'm, I'm gonna do a quick skim of 120 here just to show you guys what we're looking at. So hilariously bad. This is like an artistic interpretation of paint. This is the whole panel of awesomeness. All right, that was probably like 20 minutes to get this thing smooth like it is. And uh, it is very smooth. Looks great. No humps, no humps, no humps, no humps, no humps. Um, however, a couple spots came through. That's okay. It just means that we keep getting flatter and flatter and it keeps getting more and more refined. Well, that was a ton of work, um, but I will say that every time I do this, 
I get more and more excited because there are fewer and fewer flaws. And you know, when I see a car go into the paint shop, like at Henry's at Costa Mesa, I, what always occurs to me is how perfect it is. I'm like, I literally can't find a single flaw before it goes into paint. So that's what I'm working towards here. I do have a couple spots I'm going to address with some glaze and maybe uh, one other spot, but I'm gonna actually take my body panels off now and put them somewhere else. I'm gonna bring them out to the back, I think. I've got a couple of spots like here on the sill that I need to do a little glaze, a couple of spots just throughout the car that still need just a teeny little bit. Uh, and I think that's okay. I don't think it's a big deal to, um, you guys saw me hammer and dolly. Like you can't do enough, you know, it's one thing to get caught up and be like, oh, I should have caught this the first time. But I think when you first put uh, primer on, there could be hundreds of spots, tiny little dents that you never see until you get closer and closer and closer to the final. So, you know, this is part of it. Th these hours and hours and hours of dedication all literally come out in the paint when it's done. So the ROI is there to actually do it. All right, dudes, it's been a couple of days and uh, I've taken all the panels off the car. I've given them some attention. There was a few spots that were highs and lows and it was just easier to do the stuff off the car. More sanding, of course. Right now, I'm addressing a little bit on the front end now that I've taken the fenders off. Basically, there was a little bit of pitting kind of in this area here that I wanted to just level out. And um, I'm gonna hit that now. And then I've got just a few more little areas to touch up before the entire thing gets another coat of primer. All right, guys, so I've been working back and forth with the car a ton. Lots of body filler, lots of glaze, lots of sanding. And here I am preparing the underside of the doors and the underside of the hood because I wanna get a coat of primer on them. Uh, I've also sealed the big holes in the door so I don't spray the primer uh, over the undercoat that I've already put on, including the, um, the sound deadening material. So the plan here is I'm going to shoot all of the underside stuff and probably the two fenders uh, I actually looked at my gun, I deconstructed it to clean it for this very purpose, and it turns out the housing had a crack in it, which is why it was leaking all over the place when I tried to prime it the other day. So uh, I've gotten a new gun, I've disassembled it, I've put the 1.8 millimeter tip on the end, and um, thankfully I've done a couple of sprays, once with pure water, just to check kind of what the fan looks like, functionality, how it feels, and then I did um, lacquer thinner, which uh, cleans the gun of like any oils or anything like that that are already uh, in the gun from manufacturing. All right, I am once again trying to be as prepared as I can. I got rags, I got a trash can, I got my gloves on, I got the gun ready. But you know, you never know unforeseen things. All right, so that actually went really well. Uh, it went on beautifully. Um, I was able to get the underside of the hood and both doors and kind of the, the first part of one of the fenders. Success. All right, so I think that went really well. In fact, I was psyched because I ran out of uh, primer exactly when I finished the second uh, fender, which was super cool. Um, everything looks great. I think there's still one spot on one of the fenders that I, uh, in fact, the one that was giving me the least trouble uh, that I still need to fix, which I'm a little bit like eh, about, so I'm gonna have to fix that. But, um, other one went on well, like, in fact, the real trouble spot that was on the passenger side that I had to knock down and re-weld and all that stuff looks absolutely perfect. Uh, but let me show you guys what we did. All right, first the bad-ish news. You can see there's a spot. I don't know if you can see this. There's sort of like, you can see this little bump like right here. That's a little bit of an anomaly. And then there's still a little bit here. Just a little bit of waviness. It's actually too much primer right now, but 
There's just a little bit of waviness there. I put primer there just in case I needed to use it as a filler. But here's the other one that was having all the problems before. And look how glossy. I wonder if you could see how glossy this primer is. You guys see that? I can't tell because it's so bright out here if you guys are seeing this, but it like, it literally looks like it's going down as gray paint, which is really cool. Uh, and then here's the underside of the hood, which uh, certainly with this temperature is completely dried by now. It actually looks really good. Each door on the inside came out really nicely. So this is a pretty monumental, you know, piece here is getting the insides of this stuff done. Now, based on the amount of finish sanding, taping, masking, all the stuff that I have to do to the chassis. Uh, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna probably take most of my Friday. Uh, but I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. Uh, we're not done yet. I'm gonna be done for the day, but I will continue this video and we will work on day, whatever the hell it's been, five of getting the car fully primed for the final time. All right, hey dudes. It's been a couple of days since I primed the uh, doors and the hood. I'm gonna show you guys what I did. In fact, we should do that now before I actually, no, we shouldn't. Uh, really quick, I have a request for you. Uh, two requests, actually. Number one, if you could follow my uh, Fresh Steel YouTube account, which is uh, right here, I'll link it up. Uh, it's also be the first uh, comment. I'm trying to get my new business off the ground. Uh, I'm doing these, what I think are kind of cool time-lapse videos as I blast these cars to bare metal. And that account only has like a couple hundred subscribers. So the last time I asked you to subscribe, granted it was like a hot chick who was working on a car, but like 3,000 of you subscribed. So if just a fraction, just a few of you could go to Fresh Steel and check out my new little channel uh, on YouTube and on Instagram, I would be super grateful for you to do that. And number two, are, are any of you watch guys? Do you collect watches? Are you like a Rolex person or a vintage Hoyer person or anything like that? I have a potential sponsor for the channel that's in the watch world. And I wanted to show them that like, if people are into it that watch my channel, then maybe we could uh, make something happen and that would be great for me and for you. Got the panels done. So basically uh, both front fenders, both doors inside and out and the hood inside and out. Super excited about all those things. Really the primary thing is getting the chassis done. And to do that, I need to tape up the um, underside. So basically where the fenders would go, I need to tape all that stuff up, tape all the window holes up like that, and then give it a What do you think, Ben? All right, so these have had a couple of days to, uh, to, to harden up. They've actually been sitting out for a couple of days and they have little, I don't know what this yellow stuff is. Is it bee poop? Whatever it is. But these feel pretty good. Uh, doors feel great. They all feel great. Like there's a couple of spots. There's like, is it on this door? Um, where like right here I need to fix. Although I'm actually not, we're gonna leave this. The reason I'm doing it like this is because we're gonna take this over to Henry's. All right, so I've got the fenders on the car just cause it's the easiest way to store them to dry. I've gotta give the car a full like blowout, wipe down and tape up the insides of all of the windows. I'm gonna see if my buddy will come over and help me um, once I've taped it, kind of get the, the covering, the wrap on the car. And I have a little bit of sanding to do on a few spots where I've just touched up like in here and, and that kind of stuff. All right, so I've just spent the last hour uh, sanding the entire car back with 240, addressing any little issues I had. I reshaped my rear taillight area Nope, I got a hit right there and right there. I see it from here out in the light. So I'm gonna hit that real quick. Uh, wipe the entire car down with wax and grease remover now, and then hopefully get the whole thing taped up and ready for some masking.
escaped and I'm gonna try something for the first time. I've only seen on like Paint Society. Uh, I have some wrap, you know, I have some like uh, car masking and I've seen them do what I just did and then basically take the, um, the, the cover and stretch it over and then kind of drop it and then push all the edges in and then cut it out with a razor blade. So then you have basically all the holes filled uh, on the car. Okay guys, I am fully taped now. I've got all the door jams exposed. Taping obviously takes a really long time. You guys probably all know that. Uh, a lot of it didn't really need to be done. Like it wouldn't be a big deal if I got overspray inside here, but I actually wanted to practice this technique of laying the plastic over and, and taping up around it, which for all intents and purposes went well, except for the massive wind. Uh, and then we had a, a folded up side that got stuck and that messed things up a little bit. But otherwise, I think it looks really good. And I have to decide now if either the wind chilled out or if I should just crack the door and do my little ventilation and just bang it out in here. All right, I got the gun set up. I'm gonna do one more quick wax and grease remover on the big panels here. And then uh, I'm gonna send it. Let's do this. So, uh, ran out of battery there, as you might have seen, but I also ran out of things to prime. Mm. I got the whole chassis done. I also got the other uh, fender done, which was super cool. Uh, it's wet right now, so I'm gonna give you guys like a little tour so you can kind of see the what it looks like while it's wet and like really glossy. And then tomorrow, um, I'll wrap this video up and I will give you the tour of kind of what it looks like as it's dried. All right, I was gonna wait until tomorrow morning to show this, but it's already dry and it looks freaking awesome. Look at the lines. Look at that lovely reflection, uninterrupted. Yeah, nailed it. Absolutely freaking nailed it. Do you believe how shiny this primer dries? So cool. Um, now, there are like a couple of little baby things. I did discover a little ding here, right there, that I missed before. No big. Um, and there's like a teeny little guy right there that I can see. But the block sanding team at Henry's should be able to take care of everything at Costa Mesa. But I am absolutely stoked. Do you believe this? I was just talking to my buddy JJ about the car and we were trying to calculate the amount of time I've put into this thing to get it to this point and we figured it was probably somewhere around 900 hours uh, between all the custom work and the fabrication and the zillion hours of body work I just did. I couldn't be more pleased. I think it just looks ridiculously awesome. Um, I can't believe it's this far. Uh, next step is to get the panels at least loosely fit on the car, maybe finish double checking all the gaps and make sure they're good, and then get it on a trailer down to uh, Henry's Costa Mesa Auto Body and uh, get some paint on this thing. Get gar gar gar! How freaking cool is that? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was an informative video. As always, I hope you were entertained. Are you not entertained? 
I am completely stoked and we'll probably have to have a, a, a whiskey or something to commemorate this day. After I play a little frisbee with that guy who has been, uh, you know, uh, nudging me in that direction for a while. Once again, um, thank you guys for subscribing to my Fresh Steel account. I've pinned the first comment to this video. If you would be so kind to subscribe to that channel, I would be very, very grateful. And two, anybody that's into watches, any kind of vintage watches or collecting watches, like, you know, the Rolexes and the Omegas and the Hoyers and things like that, probably not the, you know, I have a diesel watch from 1999. Um, let me know because the more constituents I have in that realm, the more apt I am to get this hopeful sponsorship for the channel. So thank you guys once again for watching. You guys rock like a freaking hurricane. I'll talk to you soon.